Who writes this stuff, honestly? The legs of a hundred hungry Tour de France racers? Hey! You're welcome everyone, thanks for tuning in. I am Jason, not Jaren. He is not able to impart his wisdom today. But man, what a race today. Holy smokes, that was freaking awesome. The brake is wooden form, and as a result, the peloton got blown apart. Literally blown apart by everyone wanting to get into the brake. And not just the teams that desperately need a win. The two top GC teams, Jumbo, Visma, and UAE were also attacking. One attack after another attack after another attack shut down again and again and again for literally hours. This went on for more than two hours. And when a break finally gets away, like more than halfway through the race, well, he, tr he was making so many attacks early on. He, he would get away and then he'd get pulled back in and then other attacks, etc. He did not manage to get be a part of the break because the day was so aggressive. It's just a small handful that actually ends up getting away. And he basically gets whittled down to about six riders, followed not very far back by the blown apart Peloton. It's not really a Peloton. Peloton is basically non-existent. I cannot remember a breakaway stage just being so relentless and so stubborn of other riders not to let let a break go or to be so determined to be part of the break. So it was really quite, uh, quite the stage. I mean, honestly, you couldn't write today's proceedings. So the break that did finally form consisted of Dylan Toons, T. Spinu, and sprinter Mads Pedersen. A chase group consisting of another three riders, Matteo Jorgensen, Ian Izagiri and Andre Amador also got away as well. Before I go too much farther, it's kind of interesting to point out that Ian Izagiri, uh, Kofidis, they were winning a whole bunch like 20 years ago, and then they they just stopped. They ran out of talent or whatever, and they had a drought from like 2008 until to the present day, until this Tour de France where they had their first win. So anyway, eventually the two groups come together, and Thibaut Pino and Vanderpool and a few others also bridge to the finally formed break. So for sure short time was maybe a little bit bigger than six riders. There were a few attempts to get away from the break, including Julian Alphilippe, who tried not very successfully and failed. Vanderpool then makes a valiant go of it, and it was looking like his attack might stick, because those behind were uncohesive, kind of dilly-dallying, not really sure how they were going to proceed, but eventually Jorgensen gets away from the bickering group behind, chases Vanderpool down, and Pino is able to hold his wheel and follow Jorgensen, and they both bridge to Vanderpool. Not wanting to sprint against Vanderpool, Izagiri attacks Vanderpool on the final climb. And Vanderpool makes, you know, he goes with him and it looks like, you know, hey, you know, Vanderpool's there, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna do it, man. He's gonna get to the end of the stage, he's gonna win. Well, he isn't able to hold. Izagiri is real. Izagiri's sort of on another level today. Vanderpool can't match the explosive pace of Izagiri and goes too far into the red. No one can match the pace of Izagiri. Tried to get after him, tried to rein him in, but just didn't have the firepower. So, Izagiri Gary souls away to the line. None of the rest ever managing to work together to bring him back. That was the uh, very exciting stage today. Definitely a memorable stage. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It helps us out. The subscribe button helps us eventually get to a thousand subscribers. That's our goal. Because if we get to a thousand subscribers, maybe we can justify the money we put into this channel. So thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed this little video. And as I always say, round up for watts, round down for heart rate. Because that means you're fixed.